Who was the first woman to cast a vote equal to men in America? Few people would name a 15-year-old Lemhai Shishom named Sacagawea. Truth this would be, however, as noted in Lewis and Clark's journals, every member of the Corps of Discovery, including Sacagawea and a black slave named York, voted on where the party should winter when they reached the Pacific in 1806. In the American imagination, the West was won by rugged men on foot and horseback frontiersmen, cowboys, soldiers, and sheriffs. But history confirms women had been living in the vast western wilderness centuries before the first white men arrived, and they continued to play an equally important role in taming the American frontier. What did women find when they settled among the sagebrush and mountains in this place now called Idaho? What opportunities could an unincorporated territory offer women? Who were those first formidable women who won our right to vote, become an entrepreneur, an astronaut, or an inventor? She was 14 years old when Thomas Jefferson completed the Louisiana Purchase in 1805. A French trapper with a reputation for laziness bought the teenage Lemhai Shoshone from the Hadassah tribe that same year. When Charbonneau was hired by Lewis and Clark as a guide and interpreter, he brought along his pregnant wife. From written history, it might appear this young native woman was a pawn to the will of men and manifest destiny. But in reality, Lewis and Clark would not have succeeded without Sacagawea. Emma Edwards was 18 years old when she entered a statewide contest to design Idaho's state seal in 1863. When the committee announced the winner, the men were surprised to see a young woman claiming the $100 prize. Wisely, Emma had submitted artwork using only her initials to ensure equal consideration to her more established male competitors. Esto Perpetua, Idaho's motto, is Latin for it is perpetual, as is Emma Edwards' claim to being the only woman in America to create a state seal. Polly Bemis was only 53 inches tall in 1880, but she proved herself tough as any Idaho mountain man. As a girl in China, she was sold by her impoverished family and shipped to California in a cage, doomed to be an enslaved prostitute. Bought for $2,500 by a saloon keeper in Warren, Idaho, she eventually proved to be one of Idaho's most resourceful pioneers as wife to Charlie Bemis in the remote Salmon River wilderness. In retrospect, Polly's strength of character reads like the book and movie it inspired. In 1883, orphan May Arkwright arrived in the Idaho mining town of Kellogg and quickly earned the reputation as the best cook in the Coeur d'Alene's mining district. By 1901, May and her husband Levi had struck it rich in the Hercules silver mine. Independent and outspoken by nature, May rallied support for the women's suffrage movement and played an eminent role in securing Idaho women the right to vote 24 years before America's 19th Amendment was passed. Most people wouldn't think that of Idaho as being a real bastion of female rights. We really are. We've always been on the cutting edge. We've always been um, above average women in our legislature. Uh, we have many CEOs, we have many women entrepreneurs in our state, and a lot of that is because of the women that have come before us and have done the work and have um, sacrificed so that we can move forward. Idaho was the fourth in the nation to actually pass the women's right to vote 24 years before the nation uh, ratified the 19th Amendment. So there were women of, that were making great sacrifices when they, they stood up in communities everywhere and said, you know, we need to vote. So we're looking forward to celebrating 100 years of the, the, the nation's ratification of the women's right to vote, but Idaho was even before that. If you go back in history, you know, the pioneer roots, you know, the women were equal to men in driving and taming the West. And when you think about Utah and Idaho and Wyoming, that's where women got the vote first. That's where the first women were elected to the legislature. That's where we saw the first doctors that, that were women. It's a new era that we're in. And uh, even though we see still tremendous resistance that uh, you know, is happening today, uh, people trying to get women to be, don't, don't speak up, don't, you know, you're gonna face terrible consequences if you do. Uh, there's no silencing women anymore. And I think it's, it's an exciting time.